So Jarrell Miller has some choice words for Anthony Joshua. He speaks specifically on the fact that Joshua is now being trained by Derek James out in Texas. And so he says, Texas can't teach you no heart. Uncle D, meaning Derek James, is my man out there in Texas, but he can't teach you heart. You're always going to be a pussy. You were born a pussy. You look like a pussy and you smell like a pussy. End quote. A very profound quote by Mr. Miller right there. Of course, I'm not going to base this entire video off of what he said, but I do feel like it, it. it's an interesting talking point in terms of what it potentially reflects. Um, firstly, I think this is to be expected from Jarrell Miller. He's a big mouth. Um, he's kind of out in the wilderness, uh, which was obviously of his own doing because he failed multiple tests, served a ban, has had to rebuild his career since coming back. But he's clearly angling. I that uh, for that Joshua fight he wants a big payday a big payday that he was set to have four years ago but of course fumbled it because he just couldn't resist cheating and so yeah to be expected from a character perspective but also he wants that bag let's be real however the topic of Joshua's heart is obviously it's um it's a common talking point these days uh his recent performances, there's been an, an overtone, I want to say, of Joshua's heart being the kind of crux of his situation where it seems to be something that he's really struggling with. Um, he seemed gun-shy. He seemed unsure of himself in recent fights and just can't seem to, to go that extra mile to really put in a championship effort. And this is obviously turning off a lot of people because they want to see fighters that, that lay it out on the line leave it in the ring. And Joshua just doesn't seem like he's able to do that these days. And this talking point, you know, this talking about heart, is something that's followed Joshua for a long time. And it's usually one of the the criticisms of Anthony Joshua. And I, I get why people say it, but personally, I just I have a hard time agreeing with it because I, I see something different. And now... Heart is one of those things, like as Jarrell Miller alludes to, that heart you can't be taught heart. And there are a lot of you get these sayings in boxing all the time. You can't teach that this. You can't teach that. You know, you have to be born with this, otherwise, you know, forget it. Uh, usually pertaining to to heart and punching power. And I understand that, but the way I see it is, I think you can absolutely train power as a, a physical quality, and I think you can absolutely train heart as a uh, an emotional psychological quality mental quality but your genetic makeup predisposes you to have a, a higher or a lower potential if that makes sense so i think you can absolutely train those qualities however depending on your makeup physically or emotionally and mentally you're um, only going to be able to take it so far compared to another person who may have a a greater potential for improvement in those areas. You know, like, you can absolutely train your uh, body to strike with more force. It will be physiologically incorrect in a lot of cases to to deny that. However, there are, there are multiple aspects that come into making you a, a hard puncher or a knockout artist. But to say that you can't train power is just just wrong, I think. And I feel the same about heart. I feel like if you nurture a fighter and you present them with challenges that are ever so slightly outside of their uh, their reach, but they're still manageable, it's a manageable uh, challenge, slowly but surely you can get them to be really confident in themselves, really steadfast in the heat of battle and, um, and get them to really back themselves. However, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to come up against the, uh, the next fighter who has m massive heart genetically or uh, is predisposed just by his psychological makeup to have a bigger heart and he's going to come out on top however that being said there are quite a few um there are quite a few fighters who are examples of having massive hearts but still coming unstuck multiple times in their careers first that comes to mind is amir khan he's a fighter who had a massive heart i know towards the end he didn't always display it uh, namely against Terence Crawford, where that yeah that was Khan didn't exactly go out in his shield in that fight, but 
Khan in his prime, and even when he was a young man as an amateur, a teenager, showed massive heart, but wasn't the most um, intelligent fighter in the ring and didn't have the greatest chin. And all that heart didn't really mean much. So you can have a massive heart, but if you get nailed to the canvas, it's not really going to help you that much there, is it? But I get it. It's certainly an important quality. But just to revisit Joshua, he's had this criticism leveraged against him for a long time, it seems. And personally, I, I understand where it comes from, but I'm not sure I entirely agree. Because I think Joshua has, on multiple occasions, actually showed quite a big heart and a lot of bravery as an amateur, as a professional. Uh, a lot of people point to the Andy Ruiz fight and they say, oh, see, you know, the way he went out against Andy Ruiz in the first fight, he quit. You know, that's where his heart was broken. There, He showed no heart. I don't buy that. I don't buy that, if I'm honest. Because if you look at that Andy Ruiz fight, Joshua was winning the first three rounds quite clearly. Knocked Andy Ruiz down in the third round, got greedy, got nailed, and was dropped. But then he went on to fight for another, what, three or four rounds? He didn't just look for a comfy spot on the first time he got knocked down and thought, oh, you know what, oh, I'm, not, I'm not feeling this, I'm not up for this. No, he got up and he carried on fighting got knocked down numerous times and then got stopped in the corner. And now some people, they look at that stoppage and they think, oh yeah, it's smoking gun, he quit. Maybe Joshua did quit. I think it's always going to be, this is an ambiguous one because unless you're in his head and you know what he's thinking at the time, it's going to be um, difficult. I don't see it as this smoking gun at Joshua quit. And maybe this is pointless chat because this is four years ago, it's said and done happened. But I just think... Joshua's been misrepresented a little bit because I do think he actually does have heart. I don't think he has to be taught heart. I think he just needs to rediscover it. Because as I say, I think Joshua already has heart, but he's just, he's separated from it. He's lost it a little bit and he just needs to rediscover it. Um, now that's easier said than done, 100%. And even if he does re rediscover his heart, doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to be able to go in there and beat the likes of Fury and Wilder, maybe even Usyk in a trilogy. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. However, I think it's kind of universally agreed that should he, should Joshua get back into the right headspace and rediscover that fighting spirit, that heart, he probably gives himself the best possible opportunity to and becomes the best version of himself. Um, but yeah, you know, just to go back to that Ruiz fight, there have been plenty of fighters the level of Joshua who have who have quit in the face of much less. You know, look at the legendary Roberto Duran, one of my personal favourite fighters of all time, quit in the rematch against Sugar Ray Leonard. Just kind of waved his arms, oh, oh no, I'm I'm done. And then he he said after the fight that um I think it's quite well documented that he only quit because he needed to go toilet. Yeah. And this is a legendary fighter in Roberto Duran who, in other instances, showed a massive heart. So, human beings aren't, they're not robots. There are fluctuations in these kind of things. And I think Joshua, Joshua gets a real, a lot of unfair criticism. Um, and this criticism surrounding his heart, I think some of it is valid. But I think some of it may be a little bit far-fetched, you know. Because, yeah, Joshua, some people may say he quit against Ruiz. But then six months later, he went in against Ruiz again in the rematch. And, yeah, people say he ran. But to overcome that kind of adversity and go in against the guy who you, um, who really starched you the first time round and you go in against him trying to right that wrong, yeah, it takes a lot. Uh, same thing with Usyk. Usyk really broke Joshua's heart in that first fight. You know, the smaller man beat him up in front of his home fans. And then Joshua was like, you know what? Got to try again. And probably the best example or one of the biggest examples of Joshua displaying his heart was against Dylan White for my money. Because that was a grudge match as well. There was a lot of pressure in that fight. A lot of people, I, I a lot of people who are probably going to watch this video, 
I imagine that they weren't even watching boxing around the time when the Joshua White fight was uh, building up to, you know, building up to that fight and when it happened. But that was a high pressure fight. A lot of people were picking Joshua to win, but it was really just because they were on the bandwagon. Most objective observers saw this as a real 50-50 closely contested fight, a grudge match because both guys really didn't like each other. And you should, you know, your O2 Arena was just packed to the rafters. Like everybody wanted to see that fight. And Joshua was really having it all his own way in the opening rounds. I think it was the second or the third round. Got clocked with a left hook, which is Dylan White's money punch. And he stood up to it. Didn't get knocked down. He was, he was still smiling because the thing was Joshua was really belligerent in that fight. He was constantly sticking his tongue out at White goading him, taunting him when he had White hurt. And the thing is, that wasn't wiped off of Joshua's face as soon as he got clocked with that punch. He was still there. He was still goading White. He covered up, he was against the ropes. He weathered the storm and slowly but surely worked his way through the fight and secured the stoppage in round seven, I believe. Like Highlight real stoppage. That takes heart. Against Klitschko, got knocked down in the mid-rounds after having success, got floored Big time, big time with that right hand, which is, you know, Vladimir Klitschko, one of his money punches. Joshua got up, looked terrible for most of the fight, but he still, he stayed in there. And then obviously secured the stoppage in what, round 11, after being dog tied, after being uh, behind on the scorecards. Doesn't that take heart? And maybe these were the, the experiences that kind of, put Joshua into his shell a, bit, a little bit. They highlighted his mortality. But at the same time, it's kind of paradoxical because they may have got him... These uh, uh, excuse me, these instances, these examples that I'm, I'm reeling off, they were his biggest displays of heart and bravery in his career. But they're also what caused him to be gun-shy because, of course, he started to be more reserved in his style started to focus on boxing a bit more and come away from that blood and guts mentality. So I guess it's it's a nuanced argument. And to be fair, you know, I, I talk about Joshua having heart and just needing to rediscover it. He doesn't exactly have time on his side. You know, he's a 33-year-old man and I'm personally in the, the camp of people who feel like Joshua can uh, or Joshua still has improvements that he can make he's still got he hasn't fully met his potential yet however I'm fully aware that at 33 years old time isn't exactly on his side and sooner or later we're just gonna have to say you know what Joshua is just as good as he's gonna be and especially if he goes into a fight against Deontay Wilder in December it's not looking good for him and I guess ideally he would have a fight in the interim, in the summer, a confidence boost to going against Wilder because Wilder's vicious. Yeah, Wilder's technically not that great, but he's a massive puncher. And if he has you hurt, he will go for you. He will set about you like a shark. He'll smell blood and he gets blood lust. And the thing is about Wilder as well is he has massive heart himself. You know, if you look at what Wilder himself has been through, you know, that first uh, that first Fury fight was was tricky it was difficult he had a hard time pinning down fury and even when he did land on fury fury got back up stuck it on him and then in the second fight wilder just got absolutely brutalized by fury but wilder never showed any real signs of quitting and i don't think he has in any point in his career but even after that second fight against fury wilder goes in with him again and and he's in there into the bitter end when he had to get absolutely flattened by Fury. The only way Fury could uh, could could deal with Wilder was to nail him to the canvas. And that's exactly what he did. Because otherwise, Wilder would just keep trying to get back up. You know, like, a, like Undertaker. But, yeah, Joshua, you know, best advice ever. He's got to fix up. But realistically, how is how how realistic is that? How can he do that? But um, interesting talk. I, I'm kind of laboring the point a little bit now, but I don't think Joshua needs to be taught heart. He just needs to rediscover it. 
Even if he does, doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be the best again. And can he even do that? I guess that's the million dollar question. Uh, just my thoughts, however. Leave yours in the comment section below and I'll get back to you. But for now, thanks for listening and I'll catch you in the next video.